Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm, take two, I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Psalms 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I can do anything to God. Um, the title of this um, Bible say is Living Fearlessly, so yeah. He's got me, and I, in the last week, have needed it. So, as you can see, we're going to move right on into it. I got it done, okay? Um, I like this. It curls sometimes, so I need to um, block it to make it lay down. But And I even hid two little pockets because at work I have my keys. Um, you really can't see them because they're all the same color. They're too low. They're just there to keep my keys in at work or tissue when I'm needing it or whatever. I'm needing tissue today. My sinuses are draining. So, and it goes down. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can back up. And up. This has not been blocked, okay? So, it doesn't really flow. Uh, goes down to like mid, uh, mid calf. Yeah. It's, it's really long, and it goes down to about the middle of my calf. So, I'm happy with that. All right. Now, then, <laughs> I have, because I can't see this with sleeves on it. I don't know why. I just can't. Um, so, and I just started this. I just decided I wanted to do one. Ugh. Sorry. And I'm going to do it all ribbed. So I have I, what I think to be the length. And basically, it's going to be a super wide infinity scarf. So I can pull it up. Uh, I used to have a black one. But I want it to go around my head. Like up over the top so I can pull it up when it's raining. And still have enough to go around my neck. So I think that's, you know, wide enough. We shall see. Um, I think I'm, here's the thing is I did it and I counted it and I don't know if I want to add on and now would be the time to add on unless I want to make another piece and just sew it in, but that would create seams and I don't know because I'm actually going to do this in the round, um, so that there's no seams. So yeah, don't know, don't know. I'm going to see if I can maybe figure out a length on something online, but I don't know. Oh, it is going to be crocheted ribbing because I want it to stretch all different ways. And I have one complete ball left, so I have more than enough yarn to do this with. All right, so there's that. Like I said, this is done. It just isn't blocked. That will match it, so I will be working on it. Um, soup. I did pick up the jute that I need to finish putting ties on the angels. So that will be going down today. Uh, then I haven't had a whole lot of time to do a whole lot, but I did find these little cheapo, um, what do you call it? Towels and pot holders at the dollar store door so I'm literally um, this one's for Tori this one's for RJ uh, it says it's the most wonderful time of the year it's got you know it's kind of a Christmas tree form and this one says joy to the world and it's got nutcrackers on it Tori is a nutcracker the uh, freak so I just need to put two buttons on them and they will be good to go then I found this one for roommate and I thought, well, I'll go get a red pot holder to go with it. As you can see, it's not done because I can't find a plain red pot holder anywhere. So I'm going back out today because this is my last day to get this to, that I have off to get this done. Not really. I mean, I have time. I just want it done. Okay. It's my last day off with my wedding time and I just... Huh? want to do it 
So I have started Christmas shopping. All right, so those are the things I worked on this week. Now, when I say this week, so I think I podcast Tuesday. I worked Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, I was off. Thursday, I went and got everything I needed. I baked four dozen cupcakes. Friday, I decorated them and went to the rehearsal dinner. Saturday was the wedding. Sunday, I didn't do anything. Um, my heart hurt. Okay, and I'll tell you why here in a little bit. So, Sunday, I didn't do anything. Roommate and I finally went out and ate dinner. And, and roommate tried to cheer me up a little bit. Uh, yesterday, I went and had lunch with a friend, cleaned up the house, that kind of stuff. And today, I have a couple of things I need to run out and do. But other than that, I'm not doing anything. Okay? I, I know that people are going to say, well, don't let yourself get depressed. Yeah, my heart hurts. That's all I can say. So, the wedding was beautiful. Um, there was a couple of glitches and I feel like I was set up. So RJ's new wife, new bride, her mother is very materialistic. And of course I don't fit the thin mold and she does Botox and is very skinny and is When you see the pictures, you'll understand. Um, she dressed as if she was going to prom. I, I have no better way to say it. Yes, we were all formal, but you know, okay. Anyway, so I was invited to get ready with the right now third or stay. I went down there or no, Friday I went down there and helped set up, like, the decorations and the thing. I made all those cupcakes. I brought them all in, got everything. Then Friday, or Saturday morning, I went back and helped finish setting up, you know, all this stuff. And here's the thing. If I would have been told, you know, we really need the help setting up, could you please come help us? But we don't have a place for you really to get ready or if they hadn't said anything at all about me getting ready with them. I still would have gone, gone and done it. I would have taken care of myself. No expectations at all. But I was told, you don't have to bring any makeup. We'll do your makeup for you. And we're going to have this hair girl there and, and she'll do your hair for you. Okay. Fine. Every time that it came to my turn to get in the chair to get my hair done, the mother of the bride said, oh, no, 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 we're doing somebody else. By the time that I was allowed to get in the chair, it would have been time for the wedding to start. So I got a friend that was already there at the wedding that showed up um, early she French braided my hair. I wasn't allowed to use those services after I was told and told the price. I was a paying customer to that hair person. I was told that there would be somebody there to do my makeup and blah, blah, blah. I was even told not to bring any makeup. Yeah. If I had not brought my own makeup, I wouldn't have had any on. I was told you can get ready up in the bride's suite with us. I kept trying to get in the bathroom and get dressed and, oh no, I, I need in there. Oh no, I need in there. Somebody else always needed in there. By the time the photographer was calling for me and said, hey, I need to do the groom's pictures with you, I had to go get dressed in a public restroom sitting on a toilet it's not that I haven't gotten dressed in a restroom before 
it's not even that I wouldn't have done it for RJ on that special day. It's that I was told I would have a place to get ready. And when I was walking in, the lady that owns the thing, she was your uh, bride or groom side. Okay, that made me mad because it's not appropriate for me. I, I don't know in what world it's appropriate for a 55 year old woman to get ready on any occasion, not just a wedding, but anywhere. And with her 27 year old son. I don't think that's appropriate at all. I, I, I probably would have had a better chance at using the bathroom, you know, to get ready. But, uh, yeah, I was not allowed to use the facilities that I was told I would be able to use. Um, then at rehearsal, the preacher was supposed to walk back up and then my escort was supposed to escort me back up and then her mom's escort and then the grandma's escort. So as a preacher, makes the little announcements that he was asked to make. He literally says, come on, y'all follow me. And the whole crowd walks off and me and my escort literally get swarmed with everybody and we couldn't get back up the aisle. I have never seen more disrespect. And if I back it up at the rehearsal, I was furious. The preacher never took the time to learn RJ's legal name and he still didn't know it when he announced him at the wedding. Never took the time to learn how to pronounce it. He said that up until that point, he didn't even know that RJ's name wasn't RJ. Really? When you go by your initials, RJ, did he really think I put first name R, middle name J? Who does that? So he never took the time RJ's name is Randy James Talkett Straw. It's a long story. If you've been with us any amount of time, you know the story. It was done. We did it way, 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 way back. Um, I will look and see if I can find that. But anyway, um, long story short, his name is Randy. James is my grandfather who I made a promise to to use the name Talkett. So we hyphenated James Talkett as his middle name, Straw. Now I can call him Randy James, I can call him Randy, we call him RJ. So anyway, so yeah, that's how the wedding went. Um, RJ knows it, it hurt me a lot. Um, and it's all about expectations. I was told I was gonna be included. I, I would be allowed to at least use the the things there, they all had champagne upstairs and stuff. And it wasn't even the bride, the bride, mother of the bride or any of the bridesmaids that brought the champagne. That was our neighbor down the road that brought champagne for us. That everyone dug into it and I was not even offered a glass. I have not felt so excluded in my life. And, and I know that, that the mother of the bride did it on purpose to make herself shine. Because that's just the way she is. And that hurt. Um, when RJ and I were dancing, he totally understood. He said, Mom, none of that was supposed to happen. None of it. Uh, I... And voicing it to you and obviously it still hurts okay I did get a little corsage yes I was told this is so I could remember my son's wedding honestly I wish they'd eloped anyway <laughs> no. um, I am going to be the best mom I can be hurt or not I will never say anything to RJ's new bride and I will never have anything to do with the mother-in-law 
and there's a reason. My love for my son is stronger than my hatred for what they did. And by that, I'm going to say I will never allow them to use anything to hurt my son. So, in other words, if I say anything, even after they get back from the honeymoon, if she comes and approaches me and wants to discuss this or apologize, I'm not having that conversation because, and that's exactly what I'm going to tell her. And I'm going to explain why. I'm going to have my son come in the room. I'm going to have her sit down. And I'm going to say, look, I'm not discussing this with you because I love my son more than that. If I have this discussion with you and it doesn't go your way, you're going to vent to RJ. And then if RJ hesitates because he knows how much it hurt me and even has an inkling of maybe understanding where I come, came from, she is going to be mad at him. And she is going to go to her mother because she tells her mother everything. So not only is RJ going to be put in that situation where he has to pick a side between mom and new wife, but then new wife is going to go to her mother and her mother will treat him poorly. So I'm flat out going to tell him I love him more then you could ever hurt me to put him in that position. I will vent to my son. What he chooses to tell them is fine. I just love him more than putting him in that position. I, I can't do it. I won't do it. And no matter how dysfunctional their family is, I will never let them turn me into that. Just won't. So. My love for RJ is greater than any chaos that they can create. And it's, I'm just not doing it. So, that aside, like I said, I had, I was given a little corsage. Um, not by RJ or anything, just the mom of the bride came down and says, Oh, here, we made this for you. It's store bought. It's just a little, you know, yeah. But it's something. The other thing is, is that RJ and Macy, because it was November, it was going to be cold. They provided blankets for everyone um, to use. And then they're going to donate them, um, of course, because they got all enrolled. They're going to donate them to the local shelter. But I took one. And I don't care what they say. Okay? Her mom can say whatever she wants or but it's this cute little Southwest blanket. They're thin, they're not very expensive, but I'm gonna take the corner and I'm going to embroider RJ and Macy 2224, and I'm gonna give it to them on their first wedding anniversary. So, um, yeah, I am gonna do that. And as much as the wedding hurt, and like I said, I still would have gone, even if they had said, we don't have any place for you to change. Even if they hadn't mentioned getting ready at all. If they just would have said, we need your help for setting up. Okay, sure, no problem. I would have done my makeup in the bathroom. I would have had my hair done before I left. I just would have hairsprayed it real good. And then I would have gotten dressed in that bathroom. But to tell me I'm going to be included in everything... And then intentionally exclude me to make me look bad. That is just wrong. That is a mean that I don't understand. Why would someone do that? Um, I, I, I really, really don't get that. I, I understand that some people have to beat each other down to make themselves feel better about themselves. But at a wedding? Are you kidding me? I mean, come on. It wasn't about her. It wasn't about me. It was about RJ and Macy. And that just turned into, oh my gosh. It And here's, I should have gotten an inkling 
when she said that it, it's always been about her. Uh, when we were at the shower, she literally was counting down the days that Macy would still be at home. And Oh my gosh, it's only going to be so many. I only have my daughter for so many more days before she moves out. It's all I, I, I. And she doesn't consider anyone else. And that's just sad. I don't understand the need for it. You know? So anyway, I did want to show you that there was um, one picture that was already put out by a lady who did the photography and I absolutely love this picture of RJ. I don't know if y'all can see this, but he, yeah, he's got a smile on his face. It's when all the guys were um, playing poker and stuff while the girls were in getting ready and froofing up and all that. So, yeah, and it was a beautiful ceremony. Um, I will say that they... They did a nice job with it. Um, I just don't approve of being asked if I'm going to get ready with my son. I, that just is offensive. I don't even know what situation that would be appropriate in. You know, especially for a formal event. That's a thing. Now, if it was an emergency, tornado, shelter, and that's all you got... Okay, I'm not being ridiculous like that, you guys. I'm saying at a formal event, why would I be expected to get ready with my grown son? I, I Maybe I just have um, <laughs> expectations and certain boundaries that other people don't these days. But mother and son at 27 and 55 should not be getting ready for a formal event together okay no especially when you take into account that all the other groomsmen were there a whole bunch of other people's children the same age as rj all male were in there to a point of one had to take a shower he got there and he, he's like i need the shower man blah 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 how would it have been appropriate for me to be in there I just really don't understand that. I, I, and if I'd have been told that that's what was expected of me, I would have made other arrangements. I would have gotten ready in the bathroom on my own. To be set up in that manner, raise your expectations. Say, okay, you're gonna have time to get your hair done. You know, we've got this lady that's gonna do it. We've got a lady that's gonna do your makeup. It's going to be great. Come up here. And we have a bathroom to get ready in. To have to do your own makeup, okay, which you were told not to bring. That's the part that gets me. I don't mind doing my own makeup. Who cares? But I was told not to bring any makeup by the mother of the bride. It's a good thing I don't listen very well. That's all I got to say. If a friend of mine hadn't been there and been willing to do my hair because I didn't have curling iron, I didn't have, I didn't need any of that. I was going to get my hair done there. Um, I did stop the little girl that was trying to do my hair and Every time that she told me, she says, okay, I'll be ready for you at such and such time. Come up here and I'll get your hair done. Then mother of the bride, oh, no, no, no. We're going to do so-and-so's hair first. And kept pushing it back. That beautician felt so horrible. She says, I've never had that happening before. She says, I've done several weddings. Um... I apologize and I asked her if I needed to pay her because when she came to the event she was told she'd be doing so many people's hair she allotted so much time for each but then the mother of the bride kept manipulating her time making her do other things make you know 
that's not they they slid one of the little girls oh you need to do her hair too um I asked her I said I know you came with an expectation of making X amount of dollars and I know that my money was included on that and if I need to pay you she looked at me and she says you know I really appreciate you offering she says but I didn't do your hair so I don't feel good about charging you she said I will be fine without that money she said and you know thank you for showing me that respect I just it will send me in tears if I talk about it and I know you guys know that I'm fighting it so we're just gonna move on from that topic it just remember when you tell somebody and create expectations in their mind when you tear it apart in front of them it crushes them yes I was crushed I was in angry tears I left the reception early I'm glad they had a great time but I was not going to be subject to that mistreatment anymore and the mother of the bride has texted me several times I do one word answers I do not speak with her um, she has taken to texting my daughter because she had uh, it was her number that everybody RSVP'd from or to so Tori had RSVP'd um, and yeah so now she's got her number she literally was texting Tori, posting on every one of her Facebook posts. Um, just, I don't know. I don't know what her ulterior motive is, but my daughter is not answering her. RJ and Macy are on their honeymoon. Um, it is what it is. That's all I can say. So anyway just very heartbroken and I pray this is my big thing they can treat me that way and I will not say a thing to them I will not get mad at them because I don't want it to come back to RJ I don't want him to have to live with that meanness and ugliness so I'm just letting it fall Yes, I'm venting to you, but I'm letting it fall. Um, I pray that in this marriage, her and her mom don't treat him the way they treated me. Because he doesn't deserve that. And he just kept telling me, Mom, it wasn't supposed to be that way. That's not the way it was supposed to be. So my thing to her is congratulations. You ruined the memories of my son's wedding for me. But I have so much more memories of him growing up. And we're going to make many more memories. So while that is an important marker, it's not the only marker. And I am not going to let that woman destroy it. So, anyway, moving on. That is all I have. I have um, today off. Today is Tuesday. I am going to go out and do a little bit more running. I've been doing some Christmas shopping here and there. And, uh, yes, I included Macy. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to go from there. Uh, I'm taking it easy today. I have two errands to run. And then I'm back here. I might do some sewing. I am. I'm going to say I have two I'm going to try and find a red pot holder. Um, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I'm going to find a red pot holder. I hope. Might embroider that. I don't know. I do know I'm going to finish all the angels for work. And I'm going to get my list compiled together. And I'm going to get my Christmas organized. I'm going to start working on the Thanksgiving menu. I'm going to quit crying and moping and I'm going to pray that God heals my heart 
because I'm taking control of this. Done letting it control me. Done letting it fuel the fire in my heart that's negative. So, um, God's got this. I know he does. And he walked right there with me. She could have made it so much worse. But he was with me and she didn't. So, all right. I'm off of here. You guys have a great week. Um, hopefully coming back, I will have a scarf to match this. And then I still have the white uh, sweater that I'm making for myself that I need to jump on. I really don't need to be making that scarf. I need to be getting that white one done because I wanted them done. Um, this one and that one done by the end of this year. Yeah, we'll see how that goes, okay? Just saying. So, uh, have a blessed week and don't let anybody else rain on your parade, okay? Don't let them take that joy from you. Make the best of it and just go on, okay? Because what's it going to matter in 10 or 15 years? If I don't kill her and end up in jail, it's not going to. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just messing with y'all. I would never. So have a great week, you guys. God bless.